Hello Tibians. Today I would like to show part 2 of the Flimsy series, the last episode of the Port Hope section. The difference with the first video is that I will be doing the full first floor, or the majority of it at least. Alright, let's get right into it. I do want to mention a few things first. I wasn't feeling well at the time of recording so you will see me struggling at some points. And this video is made during double experience event, so its experience rate is at 300%, but just half the numbers. With that being said, Flimsy Spawn in Port Hope is a good but crazy spawn. It's a weaker version of the Venor spawn in terms of survivability. While there's a lot more small corridors in Venor, you have more open space here. So the level requirement for Port Hope is lower in my opinion to get the maximum out of your hunt, so I'd say minimum level 350 to have a comfortable hunt. Let's talk about the most important aspect first. Equipment. Lost souls do energy and death-based attacks, but the main damage you will be receiving is most likely life and mana drain damage. For your helmet you have multiple options. You can wear a porcelain mask that is non-imbuable but gives 10% mana drain protection, you can obtain one during first dragon event. Witch hat is a solid alternative, with 5% mana drain protection and one imbuement slot. If you don't really care about mana drain protection, definitely go for gnome helmet. Simply because of the energy protection, the extra magic level and the 3% physical. I know, I'm wearing a falcon circlet, but that's fine for me personally because I rely on my magic level boosts. But definitely go for the first three options if you have the available funds. As for your armor, Dream Shroud and Toga Mortis. Dream Shroud gives you 10% energy protection with magic level plus 3 while Toga Mortis gives 6% death protection with magic level plus 4, but exclusively for sorcerers. I personally didn't go for Dream Shroud, because I felt both death and energy damage were pretty low so I went for bare skin as druid, and get myself an extra magic level. Oh by the way, you will see in a minute that I am going south to take that pull. You might want to skip that area if you wish. It's a nice pull and it includes 3 freakish lost souls, but they hit very hard and I didn't really want to take them to my next pull because of the high density already. But anyway, back to equipment. For your legs there are only two viable options, Death Okria and Gnome Legs. You're free to use whichever you want, depending on your damage income. If you play on a new server or just low on funds, Dwarven Legs is a good alternative because of the 3% physical protection. As for boots, Nightmare Boots is the best option here. In my opinion, you have a wide selection of which shield you want to use. Umbral Master Spellbook might be the best shield to use overall, as I did on my previous video. But you could also go for Shoulder Plate or Spirit Guide. The reason for Shoulder Plate is simply because of the extra physical protection, because Earth is non-existent. Weapon choice is Druid is either Falcon or Cobra Rod. Falcon Rod gives extra energy protection and one extra magic level, but Cobra Rod gives standard life leech. For Sorcerer I'd say either Lion Wand or Cobra Wand because of the standard imbuements and switch to Falcon Wand if you know the spawn well. As for accessory, Starlight Vial and Garlic Necklace should be prior if you are wearing the same set as I am. For Ring I'd say Ring of Souls, which gives you 10% extra life protection. Or Prismatic Ring. If you don't have too much mana drain but high on life damage, swap your Starlight Vial for Bone Fiddle. The route I took here was hunting like the number 8, clockwise on the left and counterclockwise on the right side. I was also doing my pulls a bit differently than I usually do. As you can see on the picture, the red thick line means to pull all the creatures here up to the north, to number 1, where you will create one big pull. The blue line is additional, that's where the freakish are. The runes I generally use is great fireball runes. So bring around 1000 GFBs along with at least 400 mana potions with you, that should be enough for at least a 30 minute hunt. During the recording I didn't have any praise ongoing, but I got Zap Charm enabled on the flimsy as I want to keep freeze for the mean lost souls but that's really personal. Depending on you taking the whole floor or not, it's best to use holy on the mean and freeze on the flimsies. If you plan on doing just the right side of the spawn, then I would go for holy on flimsy and freeze on means. But obviously, if you hunt here solo, it will take you a considerably amount of time to unlock the charms. I was killing around 500 flimsies and 200 mean lost souls per hour, so it would take you 5 hours to complete the bestiary for flimsy and max 13 hours to complete the mean lost souls. If you happen to have a prey or you just want to buy preys for these creatures, everything works except loot. 
If you're around 3 to 400, having either damage or defense prey works great as you will proceed through the spawn way faster. Just keep in mind that they do hit a lot, even more so on close range. So if you get trapped by them, you will likely end up in temple. My imbuements on this hunt is 1 crit and mana on the rod, and 1 mana and magic level on the helmet. I usually always have a life imbued bear skin with me, but it ran out and forgot to re-imbue it right before the video. I hope you do enjoy the video and if you found it helpful in any way, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you're up to date with my latest content. Stay safe.